Thank you, Presiding Officer. We wanted to call this debate Ferries Fiasco, but parliamentary staff told us we couldn't. So it may not be called Ferries Fiasco in the bulletin, but that's what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and I move the motion in what should be called the Ferries Fiasco debate in my name. We used our last debating time to debate ferries. Had anything changed since then, we could have gone on something else. But we still don't know why the SNP awarded the contract to build ferries 801 and 802 to FMEL against the advice of their in-house experts, despite hundreds of documents being posted by the Scottish Government. We've had the very sad sight of that UK forces hero, Keith Brown, beating a hasty retreat from Her Majesty's press the other week, <laughs> sidestepping their battle lines to slink <laughs> into the cover of the canteen. <laughs> Mr Brown did give a less than satisfactory interview with Channel 4 later, in which he said this, that document, the one that signed it off, if it ever existed, is not now available. <laughs> but it was quite clear from associated documents that it was approved and approved by the Minister for Transport. Work that one out. A document that signed off the decision, if it ever existed. Perhaps the Minister can tell us now whether the document referred to by Mr Brown existed or not. Well, the, sil the silence speaks volumes, presiding officer. Mr Brown, of course, uh, remembered the script by the end of his sentence and again blamed Derek Mackay, who, at the time of the decision, was then the lowly Minister for Transport, with Mr Brown as his boss. The idea that Derek wouldn't talk to Keith, who wouldn't talk to John, who signed the cheques, who wouldn't, wouldn't run it past Nicola, is preposterous, particularly when they had an announcement to make at the SNP conference. Derek, Keith, John and Nicola, the Ferries Four, a very dodgy group with no hits to their name. <laughs> There is a real and enduring stench of cover-up here. The secrecy of the SNP is appalling and it's corrupt. We don't know why the Yard got the contract, but it did. Nicola Sturgeon says, we saved the jobs at the Yard. But that Yard could have continued if it had not been given that ill-fated contract. There's no reason, there is no reason to think otherwise. Cabinet Secretary Kate Forbes. Does the member know of any business that would exist without work being given to it? Graeme Simpson. The yard, had, the yard had work. The yard had work. That is a fact. I believe, and Jim McCall believes, that it could have continued. You could be pretty certain that the yard won't take on anything on this scale again, whatever the future holds. And we don't know what the future holds for the Yard because the government can't make its mind up. Presiding officer, the debate... Well, I'll take a, I'll, I will take an intervention from Mr McKee because he never gives us any answers to questions. Minister Ivan McKee. Oh, and, indeed I do, as the member knows fine well. If, if the member is so sure that there was work in the Yard, can you please specify what that work was? There was work at, there was work at the Yard. There was work at the Yard. Uh, they had work and they could, they could, have, take, they could have taken on more work. Now, presiding officer, presiding officer, the debate has moved on a little since we last discussed this in Parliament. I've got to be fair about this. We've discovered, for instance, that the FML deal may have breached European state aid rules because the government didn't tell the EU about a £106 million incentive to ensure the work went to Ferguson's. And we know, we know that figures like the hugely respected Jim Sillers as well as former First Minister Jack McConnell, believe the failure to come clean on the decision-making process may have broken the law on several fronts. We also know that only one in five Scots think the SNP are doing a good job of running ferry services. Well, those people need to get out more if they think that, because most don't share that view. There's another thing we've discovered too. Stuart Hosey thinks ferries 801 and 802 are a little late and that money has not been wasted. Well, five years and more than two and a half times over budget sounds more than a little late and it certainly sounds like waste to me. It's that sort of attitude, it's, it's that, sort of attitude that has got us 
where we are. I won't take any more interventions. It's little wonder that the good people of Arran elected a Conservative councillor, Timothy Billings, last week. <laughs> Islanders, like those on Arran, are the most important people in all this. They're the ones that can't get to hospital, can't get to work, can't get deliveries, can't see family and friends, or can't get to school in some cases, and all because we have an ageing and unreliable fleet on the West Coast with no clear plan on renewing vessels. It doesn't matter to islanders who runs the ferries or where they're built, they just want them to be there. Our motion mentions the 15 stage pay payments that were agreed for each vessel. It could actually be more than that. It also talks about the lack of engagement with the experienced workforce. Edward Mountain will have much more to say about that. Presiding officer, I've been calling for the Transport Minister to release the Project Neptune report. We're led to believe this will set out options for how we might uh, procure and run ferries. Jenny Ruth said she couldn't release it during the Council election campaign. Well, that reason doesn't exist now, so she should publish it this week. And only then can we start to have a sensible conversation on this, because that's what we need to have. We should not get bogged down in ideology. We should listen to the voice of islanders like the Mull and Iona Ferry Committee. They've been making some very good points about vessel design and how we should look at potentially breaking up the West Coast contract into smaller chunks, which is not, as some believe, privatisation. Uh, Presiding officer, we will support the Labour amendment today in the name of my good friend Neil Bibby. Unfortunately, the amendment in the name of my other very good friend, Jenny Gilruth, is, I'm afraid, devoid of hope. <laughs> and we can't support it. She should speak to me next time and I can send her some of my positivity because that is what the islanders of Scotland are looking out for and it's not what they're getting. Thank you, Mr Simpson. I now call on Jenny Gilruth, Minister, to speak to and move Amendment 4319.2. Up to six minutes, please, Minister. Well, Presiding Officer, talking to that positivity that Mr Simpson was seeking, I have some good news to share with Parliament. And indeed, Presiding Officer, I have that good news literally here in my hand. The missing document has been found. Ministers, ministers were advised of this by officials shortly before noon today, and I wanted to take the first available opportunity to give Parliament this news. The document is an email that makes clear who approved the decision to award the contract to build vessels 801 and 802 to Ferguson shipyard. Sent in response to the key submission on the 8th of October 2015, it is dated 9th of October at 14.32, and it reads... The Minister is content with the proposals and would like them to be moved on as quickly as possible, please. Presiding Officer, the email was sent by the Office of the Minister of Transport and Islands. Presiding Officer, I hold in my hand that irrefutable documentary evidence that this decision was made rightly and properly by the then Transport Minister, Derek Mackay. Now, I'd like to make some progress. Now, we said we would continue to look in good faith, and we have. That is exactly what we have done. It was found because a copy of an email chain had been retained by someone in the Scottish Government Finance Department because the then Finance Secretary was briefed on the decision. Now, by chance, a copy of that email chain between two officials who left government some years ago includes the email from the Transport Minister's private office and was buried in someone's electronic files. Now, the email confirms what we said it would say. It is basically one line long because that is how the system of government works. Absolutely. Now, Presiding Officer, this documentary, documentation has been provided to the Auditor General and is now being published. And as I speak, uh, alongside all the other documents that we have already published relating to this matter on the government's website, I'd like to make some progress. But this email destroys the opposition's ridiculous conspiracy Absolutely. theories that another minister made this decision, and it destroys their unfounded speculation that there was a ministerial direction given. Presiding Officer. I do welcome this opportunity to discuss ferry issues again today. Our ferry network, I will. Graeme Simpson. Thank you. So what, what the uh, email just read out does not say 
is why the decision was taken and why the advice not to, not to award that contract was ignored, nor does, it, nor does it say whether there were discussions between Mr Mackay and Mr Brown and Mr Swinney and Ms Sturgeon, does it? Minister. The decision to award the contract, the information that pertains to this that Mr Simpson is searching for, has already been published. Absolutely. He has had answers to numerous topical questions. The First Minister has answered numerous questions on this issue. The opposition have to give up. They have an answer here today. You have an answer here today. Do you know, Presiding Officer, if the opposition... If the opposition don't take my word for it, they need to listen to the words and the voters on our island communities. They're the ones who want to see progress on this. They're the ones who deserve a solution. Now, our ferry network, as we all know, is as intrinsic to those who live on our mainland as roads might be to the rest of us. They are islanders' motorways, as I was told recently by the Shetland Colliers Association. And the government has got to get improving, uh, get, got to get to rather improving how we deliver ferry services, and we have to do that correctly. Now, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Simpson knows. Yes, I will. Alice Rowland. I thank the minister.